So, I have a couple of old cheap Christmas trees that are for the kids' rooms, and they have pre-lit lights in them. Couple of problems. They are battery-powered, so if left on for a couple of days, then they tend to go quite faint. They also don't flash. They just light up and are static. So I want to make them plug in and be able to flash or fade in and out and have different sequences of flashing. Let's see what we can do. Roll the titles. Is that it? <sighs> All we need to do to take control of these lights is to simply cut the wire here. I've already done this on the tree that I'm going to mod, but this tree is identical. They are very simple. The LEDs are just connected in parallel to these wires. So whack a bit of power on there with the right polarity and they light up. There were three batteries in there, so roughly four and a half volts powers them and we'll be shoving about five volts or so from the Arduino through to them. Everything should be hunky-dory. So to do that, this or that, one or the other, we've got our Arduino Nano, you know, or any sort of mag controller would probably do. Uh, Nano's quite handy because it's quite small. We've got it connected to D3, so this resistor here, you could use to connect to a single LED and you've got your blink circuit. However, that's not what we're doing. We've got an extra transistor in here. It's a BC140, can handle a reasonable amount of current, and we need that because we're going to be powering quite a lot of actual LEDs. I can't remember how many is on that tree, maybe it's about 20 or so. And the Arduino on one connection, one pin out, couldn't do that. So we need a little bit of oomph, something that can handle a lot of current. So the LED, the LED power will be going through this actual transistor and that will be controlled via this resistor on D3. So this is connected to the base of the transistor to control that, rather than actually just going straight to a single LED. This is the resistor we need in series with the LEDs. It's 100 ohm. You probably need something similar. If you go much higher, the LEDs will dim. If you go a lot lower, they might get super bright and you might end up burning right after a short amount of time. So you look at how bright you want the LEDs. You might want to go a bit lower than 100 ohms or you might want to go a bit higher. And it depends as well how many you've got in series. Now, this has been okay if you've got maybe more than 20 LEDs or you're drawing quite a, a lot more current than I will be doing, maybe you've got 40 LEDs or something, you might want to get a resistor still of 100 ohms but of a greater power rating. I think this is something like a quarter or half a watt maybe at the more, so it's like it's, look at the size of it, probably a quarter watt. So you want to just make sure that you've got a resistor that can cope with the power that's going to be going through this, the current that's going to be going through this. Uh, one quick way of doing that, if you're not sure, run it for about 10, 20 minutes. Just put your finger on it. See how warm it is. If it's getting quite hot, then you might want to upgrade your, upgrade your resistor. From this output, and it's a PWM output as well, so we control how we can control both blinking on and off, and we can fade the LEDs in and out as well to give a much better effect. It goes to the base of this transistor, which is where we can control flow of current through the transistor. We do something called saturation of the base. That means we just switch this on, and the base will allow the, con the transistor to conduct fully. So under the control of D3, the transistor will switch on or off fully. And we can still pulse this to get that sort of fading effect. So this is code. I'm just going to skip past these concepts at the start. We'll briefly explain that later. This is, by the way, not going to be an explanation of coding. It's just going to be showing you how you could use this code. And this source code will be available on the website at the link you'll be seeing on screen now. And there'll be a link to that in the video description below. Not that anybody ever bothers to look at that most of the time. But anyway, so in setup, all we've got is setting the pin mode we're going to use to control the LEDs, which is actually connected directly to that BC140, if you remember, but it's still, it's going to pulse those LEDs or switch it on and on as we want. And obviously, I'm going to set that to an output. Uh, I've set the LED pin, should be at the top of my code, I think. LED pin, set to pin three, like I showed in the actual hardware. I'll scroll back down. So that's it set up. And then in the loop, this is where you put whatever flashes or pulses or fades in and out that you want to do. And you can see I've done a little bit of a fun thing. Well, I thought it was fun anyway, but then I'm a bit nerdy. But I've done a Morse code function. So you type in what you want to be said over Morse code and pass it to the Morse code function and it will flash it in Morse code in dits and dars, as in, you know, a dart, long flash, dit, short flash. The length of the flash is defined up there, so a dot is three 
is three. It's not. I can definitely see it says 200 there. Uh, dot is 200 milliseconds in length. And uh, da, the long bit, is actually three times that. Apparently, when I was reading on the internet, of course, that's always right, but apparently... A dar is supposed to be three times the length of any of whatever your dot length is. So I, I kept it all very nerdy and very as it should be. So yeah, you type that into Merry Christmas here and it'll go down to the Morse code routine and it will happily whack out your Morse coded message for your equally nerdy friends that might spot that it's doing Morse code. You could write some rude words in there, I suppose, but that's hardly the spirit of Christmas, is it? And yeah, and we've got the constants for, you know, an A is da, dash, uh, da, is dit, da, whatever, dot and a dash, you know, that's what we tend to say a lot of times in it. So yeah, so you've got them all actually set there. So we've got all the alphas, and we've also got the numerics, just in case you wanted to put in Merry Christmas 2020 or whatever. Uh, so that's the most code routine. And then we've got a flash routine. I've written some good comments in here. You can see what it's doing. It says flash 10 times. That's wrong because I've just left that comment in there. Let's just change that for you. Hopefully I'll uh, just save that so that'll be saved for the upload to the website. But it's going to flash it 10 times with the on being one second and the off being for a quarter of a second. So you can see how that works quite easily. Pulse, a pulse is a fade up and then a down, and it's going to do it 10 times, you can see that. And it's going to fade up over a period of one second, and then fade down over a period of one second, you get the idea. We've also got a fade up, so basically it starts off, fade up, and then go immediately off after that for the next fade up. So it's going to do that three times. So it's going to do three fades, oh no it's not. It's going to start off, fade to max brightness over three seconds, just warm fade. And we've done another flash, and then we've got a fade down over three seconds, and we've got another pulse of different lengths. And then we've got to switch lights, which just means switch them either on or off, depending whether it's true for on, false for off. And for four seconds, so I'll switch them on, they'll just be on for four seconds. No fading up or anything, just whack them straight on, full brightness, and for four seconds. And there we are, we're switching on and off again there for four seconds. You get the idea. So those are the routines, I think that's fairly straightforward. And again, you'll see that on my website. Upload that to your Arduino with all the correct wiring and you'll be good to go. So we are just temporarily installed to make sure everything's working. Connected to the tree with just some incredibly useful paper clips. Let's just turn off the light, although we're all right next to the window so it's still a little bit too bright. And we'll just come back a bit. You can see there we are, we have the quick flash. And then we've got the pulse in. And there isn't a heck of a lot of lights on this tree. But you get the general idea. All's working. If you had more lights, it would look more impressive. And also, if it was the dark, it would be better as well. Just having to shoot this in daylight. Okay, so the plan now is to put this onto a little circuit board so it's nice and neat. And and my son can then actually, when he wants to, he wants to change the sequence, he can go into the code. This is for my oldest son's bedroom. And he can actually change how he wants the flashing of the sequence to be. So, we're going to alter the battery box that it came in. So I'm going to rip out these springs. I'm going to rip out these little uh, separators for the batteries. And the Arduino and circuitry should fit there in there nicely. We're going to reuse the battery box and fit the Arduino and all the circuitry in it. I'm cutting out the separators from the box. The plastic for this box was excellent. It was rigid but not brittle, so it cut out really easily. I cut a piece of strip board to the side and check the fit. Perfect. As I use strip board, I need to cut the tracks between each side of the Arduino, otherwise pins would short out. If you don't use strip board, you wouldn't need to do this, but I prefer to use strip board. Next, I solder all the pins I'm going to use. So that's the voltage, VIN, ground and D3 pins. I also solder in the BC140 transistor and some wire to connect to the wire on the tree. And there it is, five minutes of soldering. Here are the wires I've soldered on to connect to the tree with some strain relief around this post. I'm just adding some hot glue as belt and braces to keep everything in place giving it plenty of the hot goop. <laughs> I also, but not shown here, I later add in some onto the strain relief where the wires actually enter the box, just to be extra sure. Kids can be rough. 
with stuff. And here we are, all done. Looks pretty neat, I think. I've got a small slot in the side to access the Arduino's mini USB port as well, so it can be easily connected to the power. It also means we can reprogram the sequence at will. Something that my son wants to do. Let's fit the battery cover on, make sure it all fits, and yes, again, perfect. A really clean and compact solution. I just need to connect the wires up to the trees. For this, I soldered them, having first checked that everything worked, and one reason it might not work is because LEDs, diodes, are polarity sensitive. So if it doesn't work, swap the connections around, and then you should be okay. I then fitted heat shrink tube in all of them to stop any shorting, and it also looks better, a lot better, than insulation tape. This was a really quick project, taking around 30 minutes to create the hardware, and I ran about an hour to write the code, and then of course, hours to film and edit the actual video. But I think it was worth it. The tree is upgraded, my son has enjoyed coding his own flashing sequences. All this was shot before Christmas and was intended for release before the big day. But as I'm now editing this video on the day after Boxing Day, I think I've come to realise that without a time machine, I'm going to actually miss the upload slot that I intended. Anyway, so better late than never. Time spent with the family and the final rush up to Christmas took over what few hours of time I had left before the big day. If you liked it, then you know what to do with the thumbs up. Very much appreciated. And if you're not subscribed, then you can listen to my pleads. My pleads for you to do so. If you could, just add a sub. Go on. Sub onto the channel. Anyway, enough pleading. Thanks to my patrons. For those that donate on my webpage. For those that use the affiliate links in the video description. And again, you'll find some down below for anything you've sort of seen today. Or most things you've seen today. And finally, thank you very much for watching. If I don't see you before New Year, or if, you don't, if I don't release a video before New Year, then have a great, hopefully, much better 2021 than 2020. Bye for now.